everyone, I'm Melissa from Inspire Me ASAP. Last week I shared with you an idea of how to use caution tape as a prop that was used to build excitement and engagement and curiosity all surrounding the classroom library while you were awaiting the grand opening of the classroom library. So since the caution tape is still up in your classroom library and you did not have the grand opening yet, the students are not allowed to shop for books. And you might be wondering, what are my students going to be reading in the meantime when the classroom library is closed and we haven't had our grand opening yet? Well, today I wanna to share with you how I begin to slowly and purposefully introduce books from the classroom library to my readers. The first thing that I do is I begin by selecting 10 to 12 high quality books per table. My students sit in tables or teams and a plastic basket to hold the books. So you might choose a large plastic basket that um, corresponds with colors that you have in your classroom for tables or teams or you may want to choose um, a different type of basket that you actually use for or inside of your classroom library. For the purpose of today's lesson, I'm going to use a smaller white plastic basket. I am very mindful in particular about the kinds of books that I select for my readers. I make sure that they are not only high interest and engaging, but there's a variety of different topics, authors, genres, and in my mind, I'm also thinking a lot of different reading levels. Nowhere on the books do I put, for example, if a book is a level L, all I want my readers to know is that these are high quality fun books that they can't wait to read. In my own second grade classroom, I have readers who are at a level C, for example, and I have students who are reading books at a level P or a um, level Q. So when I gather books to slowly introduce to them from the classroom library, I want to make sure that I have that broad range of books available for all of my readers. So this is just a quick example of some of the books that you might choose to put in your own book basket just to introduce the books. Of course, we have Mercy Watson. This is the first, um, these are the first read aloud books that I read to my students, so I'd love to include some of those. Um, it's also, Kate is a favorite author among my students, so that's one thing that I um, keep in mind as well, is favorite authors. Um, Geronimo Stilton books are a huge hit in my classroom. So not only do I have a lot of fiction books, but I also make sure I, to include some nonfiction books as well. Nonfiction books, fiction books, big variety. Some are chapter book and some are books that they might remember from kindergarten or from first grade. Now that my readers feel like they are represented in these books that I have for them, then that's going to help them feel like they are a part of our classroom community of readers. When I introduce the books and I establish what type of basket I'm going to give to each table or to each team, I explain how it's their responsibility to first think of a way to how to organize these books in their basket. And one of the first things I need to do is to clean that basket. So they take great pride and they take ownership over that basket by first cleaning it out. And I just give them disinfectant wipes for that. But then also they work together to think about what is the most efficient way that they can group these books and put them in their basket that they'll be sharing for the next couple of weeks until the grand opening. After the students have time to work in their teams, to work in their groups, I usually give them for about 15 minutes. We then meet as a class and we create an anchor chart, which establishes the criteria for what an organized book basket looks like. So if you look up here, I have an example of what that anchor chart could look like for you. 
Learning target would be I can keep an organized book basket. Organized book baskets, here's some of the criteria. Number one, books are placed right side up with the cover of the book facing forward. So if I'm going to put my books for my book basket, nice, neat, and organized inside of our basket, I want to make sure that all of the covers of the book are facing forward. So we don't have books that are backwards. We want all of the books with the cover facing forward, organized manner. Number two, sticky notes are used as a bookmark. Well, we treat our books with respect. So if you're in the middle of reading a book and it's time to line up to go to gym and, you're, and you, you, you want to continue to read that book, you're not going to flip the page down like this. We respect books. One thing that we will do instead is I'm going to take a sticky note and you could certainly give um, a different color sticky note per student or just have all the same color, whatever works for you management wise. You can take that sticky note out and explicitly teach them that it is going to mark the spot of where you start at. That's going to hold your spot. Number three, all spines are facing the same way. So if you look at the basket that I have here, all of the spines are facing the same way. We don't have books that the spines are in all different directions. An organized book basket has the spines facing the same way. Four, big books are in the back and smaller books are in the front. So if we look at the book baskets that I have here, both of the baskets have the big books in the back and it leads up to have the smaller books, usually it's the chapter books, in the front. And last but not least, number five, is books are kept inside the book baskets when we are not reading them. And that's one of the things that I establish in my classroom because I don't want books to get lost or for them to go missing. It's so easy for them to just slide them in their desk forget about it, and then three months later we find that they have a stash of books hidden in their desk. So that's just something that works for me in my classroom. I teach them that if they are not reading um, the book at the current moment, then they keep that book in their book basket. By introducing your books from your classroom library in this manner, you are gradually releasing the responsibility to your students. This is going to help them establish that respect that you want them to have when they are shopping for books in your classroom library because you have explicitly taught them slowly and purposefully how to treat just the small bin of books that you've given them. Once your students have mastered this, then you know that they are ready to get their individual book nook or their individual book box, whatever you, you would call it. The focus for my next video is to share with you what that individual book nook would look like and what I have my students keep inside their individual book nook. I sure hope that you are inspired by this lesson to incorporate one of these ideas into your own classroom. Take care, bye-bye.